This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Jamaica confirms the first locally transmitted case of monkeypox. Jamaica has confirmed it's the first locally transmitted case of monkeypox. It brings to three the number of monkeypox cases confirmed in the island. The disclosure was made a short while ago by Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton at the ceremony to mark the resumption of construction work on the Western Children and Adolescent Hospital in St. James. We have confirmed a third case of monkeypox only a couple hours ago, Tufton said, adding that the patient apparently contracted the virus from someone who had the virus here. It in essence changes the complexion of the challenge that we face, Tufton told the journalist. In this third case, the individual is being quarantined at home, but their facility does not allow for it, and if the person is cooperative, this is what we will do with the cases. Tufton said the health ministry's technical team is currently having dialogue on the matter of local transmission of the disease, which he said was anticipated. They are looking at their consulting, including with our bilateral and multilateral partners, looking at their protocols which we have put out already, having a discussion with the medical teams in the respective parishes, and reviewing how we address concerns around the public information, how we address concerns around the vaccines, how we address concerns around the contact tracing, and the quarantining if necessary, stated Tufton. The minister said an appropriate correspondence will be sent out shortly. Four prisoners escape Ocherius lockup. A manhunt is underway for four prisoners who escaped from the Ocherius police lockup in St. Anne on Friday. Reports are that about 1 a.m., police officers on duty performed the routine cell checks. Shortly after, sounds were heard coming from the direction of the cells and the police went to investigate. An alarm was raised when four persons were discovered missing from their cells. The police stated that the preliminary investigations indicate that implements were used to cut sections of the metal gates of the cells, allowing the prisoners to escape. The escapees are 40-year-old Therese Harrell of Claremont, St. Anne. He is charged with shooting with intent. 42-year-old Dennis Colburn of Islington, St. Mary. He is charged for rape. Javier Grand, 22, of Prairie, St. Anne. He is charged for illegal possession of firearm and the 30-year-old Jermaine Rogers of Mild N in Uteria, St. Anne. He is charged with illegal possession of firearm. Residents of Uteria and the surrounding communities are urged to be on the lookout for any strangers in their community. Persons who see suspicious activities are encouraged to call the Uteria's police at 876-974-2469, the police 119 numbers, or crime stop at 311. Security forces discover gang base in bushes. Thursday morning's shootout between gunmen and the security forces on Dyke Road in Portmore, St. Catherine, led to the unearthing of a dangerous criminal gang headquarters in the heavily forested territory just behind Gregory Park. The police were initially responding to reports of houses being set ablaze in Gregory Park when the gunfight ensued, resulting in one man being killed and the two of his cronies escaping in bushes on Dyke Road. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing the fatal shooting. During a search of the base, lawmen seized a 1M16 rifle, two shotguns, an AK-47, a Taurus pistol, and a .380 handgun. Other things were discovered including food, utensils, empty liquor bottles, clothes, shoes, items used to clean weapons, hammers, mosquito repellent, and several containers of gasoline. Consequently, Christopher Phillips, Senior Superintendent of Police, in charge of the St. Catherine South Police Division, which includes Portmore, warned the public to be very careful when traversing the area, especially at night, as it is commonly used by criminals from the neighboring Gregory Park community who seek to elude the security forces. Phillips also appealed for significant debushing to be done on Dyke Road. Be very careful. This is a regular area for criminals to move across. We have established that inside these bushes is a headquarters. In fact, there are boundaries within the bushes for the various criminal syndicates operating in the area. Whenever the police come into Gregory Park, this is one of the areas that the men escape into. 
If you have been tracking the history of our interaction with Gregory Park, we have had a lot of near misses. Men escape in nearby bushes a lot around here, SSB Phillips said. We now have a better understanding of what is happening and how these areas are utilized. We are going to be dominating this space. It is our ground now and we are appealing to those youngsters who continue to be a part of this criminal syndicate. You have an opportunity to step out because we are not going to relent. He added, I want the media feature Dyke Road. This is not good for public safety. I am calling on the authorities to see if we can get this area cleared of these bushes so that we can have proper visibility. At night, it is not properly lit and that creates a hazard for the police operating in the space. All in all, we are committed to the task and we are going to be doing further operations. Further, Phillips named the persons of interest whom he demanded should turn themselves into the police. Shane Williams, otherwise called Gaza Toussaint, a man known as Teacher, Imaru McKenzie, otherwise called Mungo, and Kirk Wint, otherwise called Big Red. We ask them to turn themselves into the police immediately. These are names we have published before and they continue to be violence producers and the gang leaders within the space, and we are not going to stop until those men are behind the bars. We suspect these men this morning were the ones who set the houses ablaze, based on what we went and saw like the gasoline and so on. Those men would be from the Mexico faction, he said, pointing out that Gregory Park is plagued by violence perpetrated by gangs from areas called Mexico, Gulf and Banga Gully that all use imported gangsters to carry out crimes. In the meantime, the senior superintendent said Gregory Park needs a strong social intervention and called on justices of the peace, pastors and other stakeholders to come together and implement the programs. Gregory Park needs more than just the routine police operations. We need some strong social intervention inside. I want to build out a stronger partnership with the community. We have been giving it our best shot, but I know that more work is needed. Two gangsters killed in police shootout. Police in the St. Catherine North Division say two men who were shot and killed in the Top Mountain community of St. Catherine Thursday night were members of the fatherless gang. It has been reported that about 8.55 p.m., an off-duty policeman accosted members of the gang after they robbed a bar in Kitsentown, St. Catherine. They allegedly challenged the policeman, resulting in two of them being shot and killed while another escaped. A firearm and ammunition were reportedly recovered from the scene. The police have not yet revealed the identities of those killed in the incident. Water disruption in sections of Kingston and St. Catherine to continue today. The National Water Commission is reporting that the disruption in supply to sections of Kingston and St. Andrew will continue for another day due to incomplete testing following the chemical spill in the Rio Cobra on the weekend. Andrew Cannon, a corporate communication manager at the NWC, says the resumption cannot begin until the health ministry completes water quality testing. The NWC rerouted one of its supply systems because of the pollution of the Rio Cobre and the shutdown of the Spanish Town treatment plant. According to Mr. Cannon, some communities will also be left disappointed since the NWC's trucking capacity is limited because of the numerous communities and the vast terrain that we would have to cover. We can't do a whole heap of trucking because one, the numerous communities and the vast terrain that we would have to cover, one, two, we also have to ensure we are, how do I put it now, managing what we can truck as best as we can. It's not like, you know, there's like an infinite supply, all right? So we have to be managing that as best as we can. So that is why, in addition to the trucking, we are also doing some supplies to the affected communities. But, let me add, they would not be getting it in the volume that they would have used to, neither would they be getting it at the pressure that they would have used to. And I know it's frustrating to our valid customers, but given where this situation is right now, this is the best we can do at this time. When we get the go-ahead, of, of course, we would have our internal systems objects as well. So even though I don't have a definitive time to tell you, like three hours, two hours, it should not be a long time. And we hope that um, when we do get that go-ahead now, it will be all systems go in terms of getting everything 
back up and running. I must say that there could be some areas, because of the location, we might not be getting back the supply immediately, especially where the pressure is concerned. Some persons may not be getting it exactly at the same time. It may take some time for the pressure to build up because, as you can understand, the system was out for quite a considerable period of time. Recharging could be an issue for it to get to those persons. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.